Ephesians 5, 22 through 33 is one of the most well-known biblical passages describing the Christian marriage. Unfortunately, Paul's words here have often been abused for the benefit of some misguided chauvinist. Today, the key term in this passage, submission, has been turned into a curse, despised and hated. In fact, many preachers and teachers avoid this word for fear of being misunderstood. However, the picture of marriage that Paul paints in this passage is not a chauvinistic one, but a redemptive, life-changing one. Here, Paul gives two perspectives on marriage to prove to us that Christ is worthy of submission. Please listen carefully as I read this passage. Wives, be subject to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be subject to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, but no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church. Because we are members of his body, <clears throat> for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each individual among you also love his own wife, even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respects her husband. Earlier I said that Paul gives two perspectives on marriage to prove to us that Christ is worthy of submission. Paul compares the husband to Christ and the wife to the church in an effort to explain two important ideas. First, because of Christ, Christians must live differently, especially in marriage. And second, Christians live differently only because of what Christ, what Christ has done to them. Recently, I was having a conversation with my wife, Amanda, about our finances. I was telling her that we need to be, be careful and tighten things up a little bit. The problem isn't that we're not making enough money or that uh, our needs are, are greater than what we have. The problem is that living on a lake in the mountains of Southern California has gotten me pretty interested in jet skis. After nagging Amanda for months, I, I finally got the skis that, I finally got a pair of skis that actually needed their engines rebuilt. My excuse was that they were cheap and we could manage what we spent on them. We wouldn't go into debt and, uh, and, and we'd be able to know what, what amount of money we were going to spend. In fact, however, I got addicted by the rebuilding process and uh, spent a little more than I should have. The conversation ended with Amanda graciously saying, so because of your jet skis, I'm not allowed to spend money on diapers. Our natural tendency is to think of ourselves and ask others to, to submit to us. I asked my wife to stop spending money for my desires. This is, why Paul, this is why Paul starts off this section in Ephesians with verse 21, which says, be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. This, the chauvinist misuses this passage to tell his wife to blindly obey him because he is in charge. He is more important than she is. What Paul is teaching here, however, is that you can actually experience joy in submission. Do you want to have a good life? Do you want to have a good marriage? Well, listen up because that big ugly word, submission, is the key. Wives, ladies, your role in submission in this passage is a great deal easier than that of your husband's. As a Christian, you have to submit and be subject to your husband as unto the Lord. Your submission is based on what Christ has done, not on your husband, what your husband has done. Your husband's going to make mistakes. He's going to treat you poorly, and uh, sometimes he's going to act like a buffoon. It's not about him, however. 
Because your acts of submission are primarily acts of obedience to Christ. Husbands, men, your headship or leadership is actually going to require a much greater amount of submission. Your wife submits as a reaction. She honors, respects, and supports you in reaction to what you do and ultimately in what Christ has done. You, however, must proactively demonstrate submission. You must love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ gave all of himself for the church. He came from heaven to earth to live as a human. He chose to take the punishment for your sins. And he died on the cross. He died on the cross and rose again to live eternally so that you might have eternal life. Christ didn't keep anything to himself, but he gave it all to his bride, the church. Men, loving your wife in this way requires all the submission you can muster. You'll choose her needs over, your, over the football game on your only day off. A night out with the boys is going to come a lot less often. And it may very well be time to put the video games away. In short, you must submit yourself to her well-being. If you're sitting there thinking, you're thanking your lucky stars that you've escaped this whole submission idea because you're not married, look again at verse 21. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Paul goes on in chapter 6 to discuss submission in the context of parents and children and masters and slaves. No matter your place in life, you're expected to submit to others because of Christ. In Mark 10, James and John asked Jesus if they could sit on his right hand and his left in heaven. They knew that he was the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and they wanted to rule with him. They wanted to be important and have others subject to him. But Jesus changes our understanding of leadership, of, of what it is to be a leader by saying, whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. For this reason, the Son of Man... Jesus himself, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. In other words, submission leads to good things. Paul's first perspective on marriage tells us how a Christian is supposed to live, what they're supposed to do. They are to love, honor, and respect others. Imitating Christ, as Philippians 2, 3 says, they are to consider others more important than themselves. The second perspective Paul places on marriage tells us who a Christian is. In Christ, you experience security in becoming one. Today, most married couples consider themselves to be two individuals that can and should separate ways whenever they feel like it. There is absolutely no security in the American definition of marriage. The Christian definition, however, unifies the couple into one flesh. A picture that gives us the impression that separation and death are synonymous. In Ephesians 5, husbands are united to their wives as deeply as they are their own bodies. Jesus tells us that the second greatest commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. The point being is that as you would treat yourself and as that you would take care of yourself, you should do the same for your neighbor. This passage takes this, uh, this idea a step further. When a husband loves him, his wife, he loves himself. The two are one. In other words, what you do to her, <clears throat> excuse me, what you do to her, you really do to yourself. If you nourish her and cherish her and keep her pure, you are ultimately caring for yourself. However, in separating this unity, you ultimately destroy yourself. Jesus Christ does the same thing with his bride. Those who are changed because of their belief in Christ, death, burial, resurrection, and eminent return become part of the body of Christ. In verse 32, Paul says that marriage, that this marriage to Christ is a mystery. It is a state of being that has nothing to do with what Christians do. Christ gave himself up for the church, sanctifies the church, cleanses the church by the washing of water with the word all in order to present himself a pure, spotless, holy, and blameless bride. This is the beautiful difference between Christianity and every other religion in the world. Salvation isn't based on what we do, 
but on what Christ has done for us. Therefore, Christ is worthy of our submission. Josh and Kelly, you stand before